Good evening. Welcome, welcome to worship uh, on this Thanksgiving Eve. It's good to be gathered in God's house. And I invite you to uh, either look on the screen for our opening hymn, or it's number 694 in the Red Cranberry Book. Sing to the Lord of Harvests. Let's stand and sing together. Psalm uh, responsibly. Uh, please respond to the dark uh, lettering. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. Worship the Lord with gladness. Amen. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our readings. I'm back. <laughs> the first uh, lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 26, uh, verses 1 through 11, and that's in page 168. The Old Testament and the Pew Bible, if you'd like to read along. Uh, when you have come into the land that the Lord your God is, give, is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. 
you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make uh, this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and to your house. Word of God, word of life. The second reading or lesson is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and it's on page 175 in the New Testament in the Pew Bible. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your grace, greatness be known, your ge- let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whoever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life.
thank you so much for that beautiful piece. Please stand for the gospel uh, reading. The Holy Gospel for tonight is taken from John chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. God, we thank you for this earth, our home, for the wide sky and the blessed sun, for the salt sea and the running water, for the everlasting hills and the never resting winds, for trees and the common grass underfoot. We thank you for our senses by which we hear the songs of birds and see the splendor of the summer fields and taste of the autumn fruits and rejoice in the feel of snow and the smell and the breath of spring. Grant us a heart wide open to all this beauty and save our souls from being so blind that we pass unseeing when even the common thorn bush is aflame with your glory. O God, our creator, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer of Walter Rauschenbusch, um, late theologian. And so tonight, as we gather on this eve of Thanksgiving, of course, we're going to ponder Thanksgiving um, and giving thanks. And Thanksgiving and gratitude are a beautiful thing. I think you would agree. Yet, they are optional acts in life. Nobody makes us be thankful or grateful. And we don't have to be thankful. And I'll be the first to admit that sometimes it's not easy to be thankful. Like when we feel like we're facing a headwind continually. Like when we're ill or facing a, maybe a severe illness. Or we got a real issue uh, in the family or we're unemployed. In fact, there are many things in our lives and many events happening even now in the world, which you and I would probably say, I'm not thankful for these things. And I'm sure you can think of one or two right now. In fact, we may find that lament is closer to our hearts today. We may grieve a person missing from our Thanksgiving dinner uh, tomorrow. We may be wondering when the chronic pain will subside we may be anxious about how we will pay the bills at the end of the month. 
We may be anxious about our society and the world. We may wonder about the trifecta of viruses that medical professionals are concerned about as the holidays approach. That said, the Psalms often, while they contain many laments, also Psalm 46 declares, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted in the heavens. I will be exalted in the earth. As our opening prayer says, O oh God, save us from being so blind that we pass unseeing when even the common thorn bush is aflame with your glory. It is easy to overlook blessings and goodness isn't it, in our lives? We can name the things we're not thankful for quite easily. Can we name things we're thankful for? And we can hold both up as well. We can not be thankful for things, and that's understandable with some things happening in the world and maybe in our lives. Yet also be aware of the many blessings. Um, and Thanksgiving gives us time to pause and reflect. The passage we read from Deuteronomy is a case in point, if you listen carefully to, to our reading from chapter 26. The author speaks of how God rescued the people out of their bondage of slavery. And I don't know that any of us here have been slaves before. I don't think so. But can you imagine being a slave? and being confined to making bricks day after day and building under the hot Egyptian sun. God rescued the, the people of Israel um, and led them to a new land. A new place opened up for them. A new, whole new life opened up before them. And God gave them the land of Canaan as a gift. They're recognizing in this passage that this land is a gift from God. Um, a land flowing with milk and honey. What does that mean to you? What would you, a land flowing with milk and honey? Probably fertility of the land, huh? That crops grew well, that the herds of sheep and goats had uh, a bounty enough to, uh, to produce a, a, an abundance. So who would have guessed this whole new path that opened up for the enslaved people? They would be freed to follow God. Took them a while to get to Canaan, right? Forty years of wandering, but they finally made it. But in the middle of this passage, it struck me that they don't forget their bondage. They don't forget that they were slaves. They don't forget who set them free from that bondage. Listen again to a few of these words. When the, Egyptian, when the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And then God gave them this land. And what we learn here is that out of their thanksgiving for their rescue, out of bondage, and this good land they've been brought into, that they bring the first fruits of the land to the Lord as a thank offering. Has God brought you through any hardships in your day or days or in the last year or in the last few years? Have you seen God's saving power in your life somehow or other? Can you recall and give thanks? And what are you thankful for tonight? as we gather here tonight. What would be one thing you're thankful for? 
I know what Bob Heck's going to say. Because I've heard him say it several times over the years. But that's another topic for another time. I think I heard him saying that just now. But. What are you thankful for? Can you think of three things, even? I'm thankful. I was, I, I was just thinking about this this afternoon. I'm thankful for running water and electricity and heat. I'm thankful that my sons could join me for dinner tonight. And we had a wonderful Indian curry dish that we made together. I'm thankful for medical professionals. Do you know how hard they have worked in the last three years through COVID, the pandemic? Unbelievable what has been demanded of our medical professionals and the hardships they've gone through and having to wear a mask for 10 hours a day. I'm thankful for our churches where multi-generations can gather. All the generations. Where else do we do that? Where else does that happen in our society but in our churches? For fellowship, growth, to hear the gospel. I'm thankful I didn't need a colonoscopy this year. And I probably don't next year either. I'm hopeful. And I'm thankful for dedicated law enforcement personnel who care about their neighbors, who put their lives on the line at times, for EMTs and medics and firefighters who are often unsung heroes, who do amazing things, and we don't even know about it. I'm thankful for those who advocate for the poor, the oppressed, the lost, and the least. I'm also thankful for you tonight. So that's a start. And <clears throat> we may wonder and think about and remember what God has carried us through, blessed us with, and when God's heard our voice. We do have much to be thankful for. We can choose different outlooks in life, can't we? And we all probably vacillate at times between various mindsets and attitudes. One is an attitude of scarcity, where we feel we never have enough, and we're always anxious and worried about tomorrow. The other is a sense of abundance, where we, in faith, recognize God's grace and provision for our lives and abundance. We have experienced the trustworthiness of God, that God provides what we need and more than enough, even overflowing, enough love, enough grace, enough mercy, enough community, enough money and food and clothing, and more than enough even to share with others. And let's not forget salvation and the promise of eternal life. The hope of new life that God assures us of in the readings of Scripture, God's Word. Enough to share kindness, a helping hand, our material resources. With that sense of God's abundance in his heart and mind, Paul, the Apostle, from prison, wrote the letter to the Philippians. From prison, imagine that. They weren't very nice prisons back in those days, by the way. He writes, Do not worry, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.
response to the good news of the gospel, let us uh, stand for the Apostles' Creed as we are able. Together we express our faith in these words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated, and we continue with uh, the collection of our offering. Your offerings continue to sustain our ministry as together we seek to be God's people in this place and time. United uh, with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Lord God, we give thanks for the church in every land and in our community. Sustain us with your living word. Inspire hospitality toward all who are searching. And call us into a more generous way of living Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the earth. Thank you for the beauty of your created world. Thank you for the plentiful harvests. Renew our commitment to share abundantly. Bless and preserve the lands and waters that bring nourishment to us and all creatures, including our beautiful lakes and rivers. Lord, in your mercy, We give thanks for leaders in our communities. Kindle passion for generosity and peace in every national and local elected official. Curb selfish impulses and guide us toward collaborative solutions. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all who provide for others. Sustain caregivers, social workers, EMTs, firefighters, medical professionals, and volunteers in their efforts. We remember someplace safe with uh, West Wind Village, Skyview, Legacy Living, the um, Stevens Community Medical Center, and other places that provide important service for people. Provide homes, food, employment, and medical care to all who are struggling. Lord, in your mercy. 
We give thanks, O oh God, for this congregation and those who plan worship. Uh, we thank you for our choir, for uh, all those involved, our those who are deacons, not here but other places, pastors, musicians, lay leaders in their creation of meaningful experiences. Instill in us a sense of joy and wonder when we come to worship you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who cannot be with us tonight, those who are traveling to other places. We remember those who have, have died in the past week. We remember the father of Doug Ehlers uh, and pray for the Ehlers family uh, as they grieve the death of a grandfather and a father. We remember uh, the Abby Scott family from uh, Barrett and pray you are Peace be with them on the news of her death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the faithful who now rest in you, including uh, pastors from years ago, Justice Faulkner, Jehu Jones, and William Passavan, whom we commemorate today. Teach us by their example and bring us with them into your loving embrace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wishing you all a uh, blessed Thanksgiving, and receive the Lord's benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Let All Things Now Living. It's 881 in the book, if you want the music. 881, Let All Things Now Living.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.